Mm -hmm. You heard a lot of stories of how God has um, been faithful and been yeah. miraculously faithful yes. in the lives of uh, the Nigerians that you were interacting every day with. Yeah. Um, and tell us a couple of those, um, just the things that um, they've seen God do recently. Yeah, um, uh, there are <laughs> there are a lot of them, um, but I, the the couple that that I spent some time with um, in in northern Nigeria, um, they have they have seen God move in in crazy ways, like uh, like uh, praying for rain in in the village where they lived at, where the villagers are waiting for rain. They are. Um, they are are praying for it too, and uh, even offering sacrifices and mm -hmm. going going to a special meeting place to pray um, because their crops are failing. And uh, and uh, these uh, friends of mine were asked to pray for rain, and uh, and mm -hmm. they prayed uh, in the language of those people. They could understand what they were praying for, and they prayed in the name of Jesus for rain. And two hours later the skies opened up huh. and um stories about people being uh being healed from diseases mm -hmm. there um there was a a girl in this same village who was very sick and uh and uh, the the village had basically uh come to the conclusion that she was possessed by a demon and her father uh came came to these friends of mine um missionary friends of mine and and asked them uh, he said, I want you to pray to your Jesus to mm -hmm. heal my daughter. Mm -hmm. And uh, they did. And uh, from that moment on, there was no problem with her. She was completely mm -hmm. healed. And mm -hmm. um, I, I have loved hearing, hearing these stories, and not just those stories, but stories um, about... Uh, Nigerian believers who have come to know the Lord uh, from a Muslim background and uh, who have been uh, forced to flee for their lives. Um, a lot of them, uh, if if they go back home, their families will kill them. Um, it's it's not safe to go back home, and so they run and they settle elsewhere and. Uh, they are still persecuted in many ways, and uh, they lose their homes. And um, to hear them talk about their stories and about how, how God miraculous, miraculously showed up for them mm -hmm. in those stories, He protected them mm -hmm. and He strengthened them uh, when they needed it the most and took such good care of them, even in the midst of such suffering. Um, mm -hmm. Those are amazing stories, but also in that, um, I think of one uh, particular man who is telling me an an awful story of uh, running for his life and and having everything he owned, everything he had uh, taken away from him because he's a believer. Mm -hmm. um, and he <laughs> he told me this story, and then he looked me in the eye and told me about how much joy he found in the mm. entire experience. Yeah, I lost everything. Yeah, I it's not safe to go back. Yeah, I have to start from scratch. I have no money. But there is such joy because mm. I have Jesus. Mm. Um so so many stories, but um to this American Christian heart, um they were uh, they were incredible, and, hmm. and I will never, never, ever forget. Um, I, I had, I had a woman uh, come up to me after service at, a, at an itty bitty little bush church uh, out in in northern Nigeria, and um, in in the villages, uh, at least in a lot of villages in the northern states, um, the the village won't let the Christians live in the village. So they, they mm -hmm. push them out. Either you come in as a Christian or you become a Christian while mm -hmm. you're there. Um, they won't let you stay mm -hmm. inside the village. So they force you to to, uh, to settle, to build your house or whatever, put your family uh, somewhere outside. Um, and so we, we visited this church uh, that was having a youth service and we traveled through the village and there way, way outside the village on top of this little bitty hill was a little mud 
building um, and they were having having their their service in there and I got to to join them and play some songs for them and speak a mm. word of encouragement to them mm. uh, and they they didn't speak English um, which I, th I think they were the only only church that had really no English speakers there um, mm. most of the most of the places where I went most most people especially in the city of Nigeria speak English right um, so I had someone to translate for me and I was I was I just prayed that they would be encouraged by what I had to say um, and and what I had to bring and after the service uh, one of the women pulled me aside and she started speaking English to me I think she probably was one of the only mm -hmm. maybe the only uh, English speaker in the group mm -hmm. she pulled me aside and she said please do not forget us don't don't mm -hmm. forget us because we are a small church and we live among unbelievers hmm. and we um it is hard it's hard for us please pray for us and don't mm. forget us hmm. and um and i won't 